Mark in the count. The swing arm now coming back as our countdown continues. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Brick Something. And uh, as you can see, this is a whole new show that I'm trying to do called uh, News, uh, which actually stands for Needless Ephemeral We Saw. And I probably won't say that all the time. The thinking is that some of this is news, some of it's not. I don't really kind of see myself as a news channel. And there's lots of really great places that I go to for my news, including uh, TNI, Fush Weekly, and on and on. But Honestly, I just kind of want to like throw my hat in in terms of taking a look at some really cool and interesting things that I'm noticing online when it comes to toys and other sort of geeky things. So um, today is kind of the premiere. Basically, the idea is that I'm going to sort of go through and take a look at some of the things that I've looked at in the last week or so. Actually, for this one, since this is the premiere, I've been planning this out for a little bit and I've got some old stuff. But it's stuff that I kind of want to share with you all and kind of see what folks are thinking. So um, I'd love it if you'd leave comments either while this is premiering or in the comments after during replay. Um, maybe let's just strike up a conversation about some of these things. Um, I'm kind of using this thing as a way to maybe just check in every week or so and share what I've been looking at, whether it's on social media, online, uh, maybe things that I've watched, actually other YouTube shows that I've seen. And so I've broken it kind of down into different segments for different topics. And I figured we just kind of go with it. Let's go and get started. So let's sort of start off with what I'm calling that's what's up, the sort of news like stuff. We'll start off with this little bit about ramen toys. Um, and again, this was a 2022 year in update that Ace from Ramen Toys did. So this was like information that frankly was before this year, right? But it caught my eye. And when I was planning out this show, it's something I wanted to talk about. So let's go ahead and see what Ramen Toys was sharing. Um, so the first thing that I saw was really awesome is that uh, they're kind of listing out their year. All the stuff on the left are the things that are going to be coming out in 2023. And then on the right, those are their overall projects. Um, the names might not seem really familiar to you. If you're someone who's kind of new to the whole Ramen Toy thing, um, they don't always get the actual license to do some of these projects. So um, they're taking classic 80s toy lines that they love and feel like collectors want to see more of, and they're making it happen. And the names are changed to kind of make it ideally legally distinct. I personally don't know how that all works out in the end, but from some of those names, you can probably figure it out, right? So Red Going, for example, is going to be a red car whose doors kind of go up, kind of like an old 80s show that... Um, yeah, um, we've got stuff coming from a not mask kind of property, a not centurions kind of property, a not ninja turtles kind of property, and a not masters of the universe. With that said, you'll see on the right side, um, those are some of the other things they've got planned. I'm just going to pull out a couple of things that I think are particularly interesting. This is a figure that is meant to be an homage to an 80s show. This is a show that I grew up with, V and V the Final Battle. I just loved as a kid. It premises that aliens come down to Earth and at first they look like us. Then we later find out that they're actually lizard people underneath and that they eat mammals and humans. And uh, This is Diana, one of the main characters that they're making. It's kind of a preliminary sculpt. But just the fact that um, they're going to be going back to this property and, and trying to kind of bring that back in toy form is fantastic because it's just not something that's happening. Um, another show that I was really into was Brave Star. It was all about sort of this wild west of the future. Uh, you have Marshall Brave Star, an indigenous, I forget exactly what people he's from, but he's a Native American sheriff in this sort of pseudo sci-fi wild west setting. And this is actually his steed. And, you know, me and Critters. But in this case, his, his steed is fully a um, humanoid, anthropomorphic kind of robot horse. 
Um, this is actually his partner, so you can kind of see he stands up right with the gun, and that's what we're going to be getting. Here's a little bit more of the concept art, and this is not something that is going to be coming out in 2023, but it's awesome to see that they're working on it, and they're actually going to take this horse and, um, you know, uh, make this a toy. Another thing that Ace and Ramen Toy are working on um, are the 80s commanders, not at all meant to be the Centurions. And so what this is actually based on was a, a character that wasn't released, uh, another Native American indigenous character. I don't remember the character's actual name, but in this case, they're calling him Apache Commander. But again, it's just amazing to think that we're going to go back to this well and have characters that were never able to be made back in the 80s. And they're going to be able to be accessed by collectors. That's it's wild. It's wild. They're asking $70 for you to commit to. It's a pre-order. And so at the time when I grab these again, this is way before I'm actually finishing up this video. They only had... 169 of their 450 border goals. If the interest isn't there, um, it's going to be hard for them to invest in the tooling and everything else that needs to be done to get these things in people's hands. So there you go. This is something that can happen. If you want it, come get it. It's actually a six inch figure, 112, smaller than the original. So it won't necessarily fit in with your original collection, but kind of cool. It'll fit right in with your, maybe your GI Joe classifieds, right. your Marvel Legends. These were my favorite. Growing up as a kid, I had the villains. I think I had one hero, maybe two. But the villains were cool because you could split them in half and combine them. So on the left, you see the land drone, which I don't remember looking like that exactly. It's an updated look. All of these are kind of like updated sculpts, a little bit of sort of flair. And then you'll notice the um, antagonist cyborg. And you can see the seam right down the middle because you could split these and then combine them with one another. And I think we'll kind of see that here. Here he is again. And you can kind of see down here, you can see him split combining um, the two together um, to make this like amazing uh, cyborg weapon beast thing so um and there he is without his helmet you can see a little bit more what he looks like when he's split in half i look at all the detail and that tech right here fantastic i love it because the old ones would have these clips and you'd stick them into uh one another there's a clip on one side and a, a peg hole on the other and they'd come into each other and they would break so now it's all done with a sort of you can see like a peg and hole system but it's really what's really connecting them are magnets Okay, on to um, Dungeons and Dragons. I will tell you right now, this is a cartoon that I watched every single Saturday, even if it was a rerun, right? I was like, ooh, what's going on? These were kids my age hanging out with like older adolescents and teens. They get sucked in at this carnival into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. They each had this weapon, right? A magical weapon and became a um, particular class of characters, whether it was the sort of the thief or the archer. So these figures came out and this is a picture from my, one of my local targets. What I wanted to highlight is two things. You've probably seen the coverage of um, these figures breaking, which was a huge bummer and I almost pre-ordered them, but I'm going to wait. Um, if anything, I'm going to wait till they go on sale, even though I love love this property so much and i'm just sort of excited that they're finally making figures of it one the qc issues definitely are a thing but take a look at these prices and you know i will tell you i live in the california bay area um i'm right by san francisco so i know that some of our prices sometimes are are way up there um compared to other markets but these standard figures are 30 dollars and 49 cents right take a look at that Diana here is $30.49. I don't know, man. That's that's intense. And uh, if you follow me over on Legion's class or just when I talk about figures in general, I love Mythic Legions. And I always hear from folks, oh, you know, that, that line's scary. It's so expensive. Um, and then I'm looking at like, hey, these are retail figures for this line, right? Here's Hank, $30.49. Um, if you uh, handle the pre-order, which ends, uh, I'm filming this on the 14th, but it ends tomorrow, um, you can get Mythic Legions figures for as low as $34 if you do an all-in. Um, 
So 37 is kind of where they hover. So I'm looking at these, and these are smaller figures too. Um, and definitely not of the same quality in terms of plastic and deco and even articulation, even though Mythic Legions compared to some other lines are um, a little bit limited. Um, anyways, these are 3049. You see Bobby and Uni too. Um, 3049, and you probably saw the price here for 49.99. You're like, what in the world? Yeah, man, Venger and Dungeon Master um, are 50 bucks, and these are not figures that are articulated. Uh, you get some arm movement, really limited on the Dungeon Master, 50 bucks. So again, like you know, I'm going to be getting some intense Mythic Legions coming in for 50 bucks. I can do that right now. This is like. Um, secondary market, I can probably pick up a, a Mythic Legion standard figure for about 50 bucks or go to Big Bad Toy Store for waves that are sort of in stock for 45 bucks. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of interested to see where this line goes, but uh, we'll see. Okay. Let's shift probably for um, one of the bigger sections that I want to talk about, and that's Masters of the Universe. I love Masters of the Universe. Um, some things have happened with Mattel, and I'm going to start off with this, right? Um, starting this Tuesday, you'll be able to order this character, which is a, a pretty deep cut. This character showed up as part of the sticker on the bottom of Castle Grayskull, which I did have, and I remember just staring at that sticker, seeing these creatures, and just sort of imagining like what they were. You know, eventually we'd learn, oh, yeah, no, this is a frog character, and they're calling him Frogmonger. But this is being sold on um, Mattel Creations. I hope it's not too intense. There's a limit of three per customer. I tried for the one dollar the first time and that was a, a whole mess. Um, at the end of the day, they're releasing this brand new figure that's a deep, deep cut. Never existed in the uh, old toy line. So it seems like uh, Mattel has some interest in like continuing these lines. Which is brand new figure, 18 bucks right accessible that's pretty accessible um they're making the mini comics this is like a huge deal for masters of the universe fans so people are excited new figure in the origins line frogmonger who to thunk i went to my local store the other day um, when i saw those dungeons and dragons figures and i saw these masterverse figures um these are new i don't have them yet but unfortunately because i'm going to be spending a lot of mythic legions um for this latest necronominous wave I'm kind of chilling on this wave. I just want to let folks know they're showing up here in the Bay Area too. And kind of, I was starting to look at them and you may know that um, I get real sort of picky when it comes to the sculpts on these. So I really like want to look at these and sort of see how they are. And I got to say this evil Lynn head sculpt and, and the whole thing, this looks amazing. Like I was really kind of um, apprehensive, but it looked really good. And um, you know, I'll know for sure when I have it in hand, once these things go on sale, but that head, you know, my biggest issue with a lot of the master versus some of the heads were just not cutting it. And I ended up replacing them with custom heads, but this is not one that I feel the need to replace. They did a really great job on Lynn Frost. Uh, on the other hand, um, particularly this one, this is the first one that I saw um, in Colma and there's something going on with that face that is just not working for me so this one kind of weirded me out but we can pick that back up in a little bit there's been a lot said about this guy this is definitely one that you're going to want to replace and in fact ramen toy who we were talking about earlier um is uh doing their own sort of custom version of this head so enough said it does come with its own alt head and it's not my thing i know people are into it but it's it's not the look but here's the real deal that i wanted to kind of share these things are going for 40 dollars and 49 cents in my area like that's intense and i went to another um target and saw these and this was the um too bad and looks great especially that purple head but take a look at that price. Again, $40. Um, yeah, it's just a thing here in the Bay Area. And here's a, a closer shot um, of a second one that I found. I like the blue head on this one a lot better. So, you know, um, it helps to be able to look at these things. Um, Roboto was at this, uh, the San Bruno. This figure looks fantastic. Can't wait to get him. 
And here's a Frosta, which I actually looked at this one. And I was like, oh, yeah, that one's a lot better. I like this one, actually. This one works for me. And so I kind of did a side by side, the left um, being the one that I like better, the one on the right being the one from Colma. Um, the eyes look a little bit more spaced apart. That works with the shape of the actual sculpt of the head better. Um, anyway, it's interesting how those things work. I mean, get it? They're, they're printing or painting on 3D surfaces. It's hard, but, you know. Uh, all right. So, Masters of the Universe. Last night when I was, uh, so Saturday night, no, sorry, Friday night on the Mega J Retro channel, Jay wanted to bring the community together to talk a little bit about this news um, that had started surfacing. And I used the word news lightly. Um, these rumors, really, um, not even that these predictions or suppositions um, that Origins and Masterverse would be done in 2023. And the, um, this sort of like rumor or I don't know, I guess hypothesizing the person who made these claims um, is saying that it, it's based on contacts that they have and um, sounds like maybe in retailers where origins and masterverse will not be in stores come april 2023 and of course fans being fans who love these things start freaking out jay wanted to bring folks together and jay's always doing great coverage and tries his best to be like he's incredibly fair and thoughtful and i want to switch it a little bit and um, the news is one thing and i'll come back to it but if you take a look at who was on this, right, you had Jay, you had Ostradamus Toys, Ramen Toys, right, Ace from Ramen Toy, and Michael from Toy Habits, whose channel I love as well, like uh, his channel, really pulled me into collecting again and, and getting excited about Masterverse. And Ken from Toy Connections, like, again, just these amazing group of people, you know, I've been on um, Oz's channel and, and Ken's channel, both of them were actually like really instrumental in helping me get started. And I've been hanging with those guys since it's been great. That said, I'm just saying like, these are great people. Take a look who joined them later. You had Ray from collecting classics, joining the conversation. So that's what I was most excited about. So at the end of the day, there's this news that comes out. A, a claim was made that this line is ending and people gathered to talk about it. Is it true? Is it not true based on what? And that was kind of the conversation. What I wanted to highlight was like, listen, like folks were saying, let's not give that person and those, those ideas um, too much airtime. Like, yeah, why? Um, that's where I'm coming from. And I, I was saying, you know what? It's not about that. In the comment that you see at the bottom, the person was like, don't give that guy attention. I was like, we ain't giving that guy attention. Instead, this is what we're doing. We're seizing this moment where people are talking about it to then give these folks attention and other fans attention to just talk about our love for this property and our excitement for this property because at the end of the day we're talking about toys you know again i don't want to focus too much on this what this news is because frankly like one person said something what value does uh, you know us sort of hearing this from this person having it like take up the cycle of us just like oh no is it ending in april or not like why especially when there's a lot of great things happening with this line as they brought up snake mountain is on its way again whether or not you believe that the end of these lines are coming in april this is coming you'll be able to have a new snake mountain an updated version of snake mountain in your hands presumably it's this year right so maybe it comes in the next couple months before April. Again, I don't want to focus on April for a reason. We just finished for the toy line a historic crowdfunding of a new version of the Eternia playset. And it's not the same playset. This is a brand new version that is now accessible to people who otherwise would have had to pay thousands of dollars to get a vintage one. This is great. No one could, would have ever thought that they would be able to do that. And they did. And they sold these things for 550 bucks. So there were 9,291 that forked over $550 to get this thing. Seems like there's a market for these things that could last well beyond this year. Man, we've got a whole like kids um, focused show and that CGI show as, as well as a whole other toy line with vehicles, as you'll sort of see in the bottom there. We've got Revelation. that I loved it. I love Revelation. It's like what really drew me to Masterverse 
And then we're getting the sequel coming up soon, Revolution. So like this toy line and this IP, it's very much alive, which I guess like that's where I want to focus in on. Like, look, we're getting new comics, this whole series of comics that is tied to um, the Masterverse toy line and really is breaking this whole idea of like a multiverse of Masters of the Universe. Just take a look at this. This is all stuff that's coming. That's a lot of investment, right? Potentially for a toy line that might end in April. So again, I should stop myself. I'm not trying to, to, to figure out the veracity, the truth of, of that whole claim. Because frankly, I don't care. It just doesn't matter for a number of reasons, right? Uh, I don't want to be the Motu April fool who's going to be scared about what's coming in April and like everyone's going to be talking about this date. Like why? Just look at everything I showed you. There's so much to enjoy and to look forward to. And you know, if it happens, it happens. But like, why would I even say that? I ask folks like, let's move on. I know I'm giving my two cents. Like it's done. I focus more on what's coming and how it's bringing the community together. I think that's where our heads should be. At the end of the day, keep calm and play well, right? I don't know if you're familiar. I'm a Lego guy, but the 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 word Lego is actually a portmanteau, a combination of um, two words, legot, which basically translate in English to play well. And yeah, man, I made these shirts, keep calm and play well after those posters um, from World War II bombing of London. I, I noticed that even in the, the Lego world back, there were a lot of like folks who would get really irritated and frustrated in the fan community. It's like, man, keep calm. These are toys. We're supposed to have fun and enjoy them, whether it's because of nostalgia or just because it's actually fun and cool and it's imaginative. I'm not worried about April. I'm not going to be the April Fool. Master of the Universe is going to be fine as far as I'm concerned. And if I'm wrong, the only way we're going to find out is not by going back and forth, you know, even interviewing the person, finding out more. Like, who cares? No, you said your piece, done, moving on. We're going to know in April. That's it. So, Whatever. Great. Moving on. By the way, if you like that design, and you'd like to help the channel out. Um, I do have a red bubble um, where I've been doing it for years, um, just kind of doing design. Some of them are toy related. Many of them aren't. Check it out. If you're interested, uh, go to Redbubble, search up Brick Something, and I'll probably put a link in the description. Let's do sort of customs corner. This is going to be where I kind of show you um, some cool custom stuff that I've been seeing. Um, this is by Skelosoria. This is meant to be a custom version of an ogre scale, uh, mythic legions, and a, um, a goblin type character that, that, that was customized with a smaller one. But if you love movies from the 80s and I think early 90s, I forget when... Beyond Thunderdome came out, but Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome featured Barter Town, and there was this character, Master Blaster. It was actually two characters, a really sort of gigantic character that I won't spoil for you because you really should see the movie. It's really cool. And on his back would be this little guy who was kind of the loud mouth boss kind of thing. And this is them. This is the pair. There's a little bit more of a detail. I just love this custom work, man. And Skelosori just killed it on these two figures. You know, I just, I love the whole custom side of action figures now. You can lift up his helmet and you see his face. It's just dope. And the Mythic Legions um, fan community in particular, just, just some amazing stuff. Just like in the movie, the smaller part of Master Blaster would ride on the back of um, the larger character. This is just perfect. I look at this and I can't, I can't stop smiling. If you're looking at that head, I love that head. And I'd seen that head before and actually had ordered it. So um, that head was produced by Monster Machine Creations. And here you sort of see a different uh, paint application again, for the ogre scale body. And it's just fantastic. That hair, the dynamism of his hair, the look on his face. I love the pupilless look on this and the sort of war paint. That's pretty much how I'm going to end up painting mine. And this is it. It's called the Berserker Head. And actually, give me a sec. I got mine in the mail actually just this week. Man, this thing is gorgeous. Whew. Um, yeah, Monster Machine Creations is doing some great work. 
So I'm excited about this one. I have plans for how I want to paint this up. I probably won't really get to a proper paint set up till the summer, but yeah, I'm ready. Um, and here's what originally I saw this done as a Lobo. Anyways, those pre-orders have actually come and gone. Sorry, again, not a news channel per se, but just great to just kind of see what's out there in that community. Moving on, behold, this is new. I actually just um, saw this today. Um, this person's doing an ogre scale mythic legions figure in the style of Darth Vader, probably using like a 12 inch head or something. It just looks fantastic next to a, a 1.0 scale mythic legions figure done up as a Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's, just, it's fantastic. I love it. The detail here of kind of trying to do his chest plate um, and then using those pauldrons and that armor as a, it just works. This is all standard stuff, just repainted in a way that um, works for this character. Brilliant stuff, behold. Brilliant stuff. Loving it. Let's move on. The first one in the Plastic Lust section this time around is going to be Ken. Gotcha Man. G-Force, if you're nasty. Right? Uh, so Gotcha Man was a show coming out of um, Japan in the 70s. I grew up, I was born in 76, so I got to see these really early in the morning, but it was the American version. With Honestly, if I had to compare the two, I'd rather watch the actual Gotcha Man, different tone, um, and then you didn't have those weird shifts in the art and animation when you just create these, you know, US only scenes, but man, just the concept, the characters are amazing. And on top of it, this is Storm Collectibles, right? So this is going for $119.99. If you can get $119.99, yeah, it's a lot of scratch. I know for a figure, but it's Storm Collectibles. I just gotten uh, my hands on, I have three Storm Collectibles right now, and I'm really intrigued by how those characters are put together and the materials they use. I know this figure is going to be great. I'm going to probably stay away from these, but let's just take a look at what they've got going on. Classic poses. I know this is going to be sort of that soft rubber for the cape, as well as some of these parts of the chest. It's going to be great. Look at that. Oh man. Lust for sure. Man, right there, that pose. I have a silhouette, that silhouette um, on a t-shirt that I created over on my Redbubble. Again, look at Brick Something Redbubble. And you can, if you're interested, there's a couple of them. It's kind of hard to get Gotcha Man stuff. So sometimes I'll just make something like Gotcha Man that I can enjoy myself. And that'll bring us to the end of the very first episode of Brick Something News. I hope you realize now it's not actually news, but it's kind of a bunch of stuff we'll be looking at here on this hopefully weekly show. That's my goal. That's my goal. So I hope you enjoyed some of the needless ephemera that I kind of came across this week. Um, actually, for these last couple of weeks. I still have to figure out exactly when I want to do these. As of right now, I'm going to be recording them. You have a little bit more control and can kind of try to like condense it and keep it tight. But I think eventually we'll be doing some live versions of this. And I hope you can definitely sort of catch us for those. That's what it's going to be. If you have any ideas or feedback, definitely leave comments down below. It's always awkward ending these things. So um, how about we just sort of... If you're enjoying the channel, please consider liking and subscribing the video. It definitely helps out. I'm trying to grow this thing. And if you're looking for even more of a toy fix right now, see the link to the left to follow a fellow member of the Legion of Lesser Toy Tubers. And until next time, peace and power.